how Web3 and NFTs are improving music. So we got a great set of speakers coming up. Come on up to the stage. Please welcome Luke Kovic, Miles Leonard, Michaela Silvestri, Josh Wilson, and where's Tommy D? Tommy D, smiley face, is in the house. Give it up. Gold here, gold. Um, great. Um, let's start. We have a few minutes and we have uh, a lot to cover today. This panel will be about how Web3 and NFTs are improving the music and entertainment industry. Um, my true honor to introduce George from Wilson Worldwide. Um, Luke here next to uh, George, head of NFT advisory token tracks. Um, Miles Leonard, former chairman uh, of uh, Farley Phone and Warner Bros. Record UK, and Tommy D, chief creative officer and co-founder of token tracks. Um, I will let you introduce a little bit about yourself first and your ventures, and then we will start with the questions. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. sure. Um, so I'm Josh Wilson. Uh, unfortunately, I'm missing from this uh, the uh, the pictures. As you can probably see, I haven't changed my uh, my demeanour at all. Um, I started off as a television producer. Uh, I've worked with the uh, likes of Tom Hiddleston and Helen Mirren, people on those lines. Uh, now I'm a contributor for Forbes, um, and I write about Web3, uh, entertainment, film and TV, and I'm a stakeholder in some companies across media, uh, tech, counterterrorism, uh, and defense. Hi, afternoon. Uh, Luke Kovic. I've been in crypto since 2016. Uh, working for software developers, but since 2018 as an advisor investor into different businesses with a token within their operating model uh, and have been heavily involved in sort of the NFT space as a creator, speculator and collector for about two years now. Hello, I'm Miles Leonard. Uh, I've worked in the music business, music industry for 30 years. Um, previously the chairman of uh, Warner's, Parlophone, and uh, Virgin, amongst other labels. Um, and I'm also one of the co-founders of Token Tracks, alongside with some of the people here today, um, having moved over to what I see as the other side. Hey, I'm uh, Tommy D. I'm a music producer, songwriter, DJ, artist, whiskey maker, and co-founder and originator of Token Tracks. I've been in the music industry for, like Miles, for 30 years. Um, I've been a struggling artist, a struggling producer, a struggling songwriter, and a multi-platinum artist, multi-platinum producer, and multi-platinum songwriter. So I've been everything in the music industry and more. I really, really fell in love with this space back in 2017. I really kind of got my head around NFTs, I think, in 2019, and that was the kind of eureka moment where I went, oh, this is the thing that's going to change everything. And, uh, and it is going to change everything. Good. Thank you so much. Um, uh, lastly, my name is Michaela. I'm head of institutional relations for Huobi Global, one of the top five crypto exchanges in the world. And it's a pleasure for me to be leading this panel and moderating. Um, my first question for you all will be, what is the relevance of NFTs and Web3 technology to the music and entertainment industry? Sure. What is the relevance of NFT and, and Web3 technology to the music and entertainment industry? Miles? Well, I think it clearly it opens up a lot of uh, creativity um, within the music industry. It also rewards artists um, tr with transparency. Um, and immediacy as well. Um, and it allows uh, artists to uh, control not only their data, but also have a direct narrative with their communities. And all of those together, that, that's just, you know, four things, you know, pretty key things, but they're just four things that I think, you know, Web3 opens up to the artists and entertainment community. Luke, George, any opinion? Yeah, I think, well, relevance, um, I think ultimately that it's it's very much in its infancy right now. You know, unfortunately, I think there's that there's so much application uh, that that Miles kind of alluded to that can be applied. I just think currently it's just not it's supremely relevant in our industry. I think 
over the course of the next few years, it will become much, much more relevant, which should be fantastic, because the application can generally help people, I think, at all levels, whether that be artists uh, or producers or executives. I think it streamlines a lot of processes and makes it easier. Um, but unfortunately, if we're, if we're asking literally how relevant it is in my industry in entertainment, film and TV, it's, it's unfortunately not as relevant, I think, as it should be. Um, and I think hopefully adoption will happen uh, quickly as, as time moves on. Yeah, and just to add to that, there's a lot of conversation that we've heard today, really interesting stuff about the technological infrastructure and how that can improve certain efficiencies within the supply chain of the music industry, which is great. And there's uh, some what of an inevitability about it, but it's not it's not it's not sexy, and it's not sexy for people who aren't involved in the industry to the crypto industry that is to sort of get on board with it. And there's a lot of similarities to 2016, 2017, where people were getting super excited about the application of blockchains and supply chains. It was theoretically great, but it was it was boring, right? And it just didn't really take off. So the relevance they have to music and, and entertainment is that it allows for creatives, as Miles was talking about, to really focus on content and experiences. We've, we've heard from Web3 artists and Web3 communities, but really what this technology is, alongside a myriad of other technologies, alongside AR and VR, is a way for creatives who are really passionate about this to generate a new medium and a new experience for their fans. And some of the sort of experiences that we're working on at the minute are a combination of the physical and the digital. So we will do an event at a live venue, say Coco. We will have a band come down. The NFT will be physical merchandise. You will have a what three word geolocator NFC chip within your merchandise. This will then be used by drones to capture footage of you within your favorite moment of that particular concert, that particular gig. You get that PO app or SBT, whatever it might be. You get that I was there moment, not just etched into your mind, but literally as a, a mutable record on the blockchain that you can play back and you can prove to, you can show that to people. You can do lots of streaming and stuff within the metaverse as well. So the, the point is, it's all about content and experiences. The back-end infrastructure will sort itself out when the labels are ready. Great, well, this takes me to the next question. I'm gonna be more specific here. Um, what about funds? How do they benefit from this tech and they're ready for it? What do you think? I think that's the biggest challenge that the industry has. We talk a lot about how NFTs are going to benefit creators, but we don't really talk an awful lot about how they benefit fans. We sort of skirt around it a bit. And I think the key thing here is the customer's always right. You know, I remember talking to a bunch of heads of, of record labels back in 1997 about downloading, you know, about peer-to-peer -peer torrent sites and stuff like that. And they... and and. I, they didn't get it. All the heads were like, oh, so we'll get the lawyers involved. Don't worry. And an app store, it'll be fine. We'll shut it down. And I was like, you don't understand. Have you, have you actually downloaded any music? And they were like, no. And I said, just try it. It's really good fun. And of course, you know, it has gone on to, to, to prove to be the case. And I said to them, the customer is always right. So what we have to do is we have to come in at f at f as, as, and I'm sure most of you are out there, as punters, as music lovers. What is the benefit? Because right now there is no real pain point for music lovers. You can get music for free, you can listen to it for free, you can share it for free. So there's not really a pain point for, for like a, a fan. So what we have to do is, is, is point out the pain points where they, they didn't even realize they had. And the most exciting thing for me is a very simple concept that if people aren't going to pay for music anymore, why don't we get why don't we get them paid for listening to music? That's the next obvious alliteration of the whole process is that you get paid to listen to music. What does that actually mean? You get paid for your engagement. So the music becomes the, 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 the vehicle with which your engagement is based around. And through tokenization, you can, you can actually pay people, or they can get paid rather, you know, for that engagement in music. And I think that's a really, really key thing here because we haven't had that in the music industry ever, really. You know, most of it has been about quite a one-sided concept where fans are 
enjoying an artist and and in, but they're investing in the artist and the artist kind of has this kind of strange relationship with the fan that most times particularly now you can't really get to the fan you might have millions of plays on spotify you can't get to any of those people got a rough idea about the demographics but you can't directly get to them same really with your facebook or your or your instagram or whatever so by tokenizing engagement you create this beautiful kind of concept where everybody is connected up. I, I, I do a Twitter space on Mondays. I have done for over a year now, uh, all about music NFTs. And we discuss music, we discuss NFTs, we discuss the intersection, we discuss it a lot. And a lot of artists come on that space and they say to me, they say, I have fallen in love with my music, you know, for the, again. Or for the first time, I'm really experiencing my music. They've only got 40 fans. They've only got maybe 10, 20, 100 people that own their NFTs. But that's enough. That's enough to start a community. And I think that's where, where we need to look at is how these fans can get involved with what we are doing as artists. That's the really exciting thing for me. You know, I was on a panel earlier that was about mass adoption. <coughs> and I think... You know, you're only going to, we're, we're really at the very beginning of this, as we all know, even by looking at all the empty seats in this room, and this is <laughs> an NFT panel. So mass adoption is going to come by mass adoption from the artist community and mass adoption from the consumer and the fans. And we're nowhere near that as yet. There's too many hurdles, I think, as the language, the understanding of what is blockchain, what is crypto. So the sooner we can break down those barriers and sort of iron out that language. And also, as soon as people start using and adopting blockchain outside of music as well, you know, in, in purchasing anything, whether it's a coffee or whether it's, you know, something from a store. So I think that we're at the point of experimentation, but experimentation leads to discovery. And so we've got to keep experimenting, keep pushing, and, and you know, the adoption will come. I remember too well that, again, what I mentioned on the last panel was, you know, when subscription, DSPs, Spotify entered into the market, it wasn't something that everyone jumped on immediately. Now, that's the most easiest thing to understand. It's like you listen to some ads, you get some music. You pay $9.99, you, you li don't listen to ads, you get more music. There's a myriad of things that people have got to understand. You're talking to the man on the street. And so Spotify took about eight years before they got the volume and scale of being a proper business. So we're right at year one. I'm not saying it's going to take eight years, but that's the mindset you've got to understand when you're going to mass consumption outside of the people in this room. Yeah, th there's some um, there's some very interesting applications across television. Uh, I, I did a piece uh, on Mila Kunis's production company that is effectively putting out NFTs to to fans of people that could be, I guess, fans of uh, of content she's putting out, and then they can help to define what the storyline is. They can introduce characters, etc. Raising money for a TV program is notoriously very, very difficult. There's a lot of people that pitch major broadcasters. There's actually not that many of them. It's very, very hard to get stuff away. So the concept of then democratizing that investment process becomes very interesting because a fan can have much, much more say in not only what's going to happen, there's obviously there's potential problematic elements to that that hopefully will be ironed out, but they have a lot more say in what that content is, and I think the the concept ultimately of being a fan, if you want to be a super fan, is to, to to be genuinely involved in what's happening. I think that that is 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 gen is is very exciting, and it's certainly a step up to what we have now. And I think that the tokenization of those things is is really 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 cool. For sure. Where do you want them discovered? No, I, I think this is complimentary, you know, at the moment. But don't get me wrong, I want to burn the fucking house down, right? I want to smash it all. That's where I stand on all this. 
as somebody who's been who's made a fucking shitload of money out of the music business for 30 years i i but i've also seen a huge amount of pain as and experienced a huge amount of pain and see a really shit system now this is a shit system that we have it wasn't too bad but it's really shit now. When you've got 12% of the money that is generated by music going to the actual people that are making it and 78% of the rest of the money going to the people that deliver it, something's not right about that system. And what ends up happening is you end up stifling creativity. Because if art mirrors life and life mirrors art, then art needs to be fucking amazing. And if, it's, if, if all you've got is a bunch of rats scrambling around for some crumbs, that the system that we have right now is delivering to us, then that's, then that's not going to give you good art. That's not going to give you beauty. Uh, right? Conver converse conversely to that, actually, I don't want to burn the house down. Well, he um, would. I, 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 no, I, I, actually, I actually want to improve the house that we got. I want artists to get paid fairly, but using the platforms that we have. Because actually, the platforms that we have has enabled uh, discovery much more than any other platform at the moment. So uh, actually, Spotify as a platform and its usage, or Apple, whatever your DSP is, I think for finding, discovering new artists is great. But the algorithms are fucked, and artists aren't getting paid. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's improve what's there. I'd also say that there's there's broadly kind of two tracks. You're talking NFT artists being discovered, and that, that that's amazing. But I feel that Web three, the sort of the music industry in Web three has a, a, a much bigger role to play in, in sort of transcending different industries. So working with like gaming and fashion on activations in the physical and the digital space. And again, it's about that experiential benefit that the fan gets. Um, rather than you know an artist minting a hundred editions of a particular song and for their potential consumer to find them on a, sort of another iteration of Spotify, I think maybe turn it on its head and think about you know how can we use you know these Web three tools and technologies to work alongside a bunch of other cool, fast growing industries to do a lot of fun, exciting stuff, and then I feel the rest of it will work itself out. Yeah, I, 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 I presume you're specifically talking about music, but just to, to chime in a bit, distribution in film and TV can be massively disrupted. Currently, it's, it's, it's currently there's a lot of difficulties in watching content in different places. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed that if you're going abroad, there's certain things that aren't available and things on those lines. So the streamlining of that, because I know we're running out of time, can be massively, massively disrupted through NFTs, and that's something I'm very excited about. Just to, to I'd actually was curious to ask you guys a question because I'm always interested in the music industry. I was going to do a piece on um, on Bobby Womack, a documentary on Bobby Womack, and I was looking at some of his his uh, his agreements from the past were absolutely atrocious. Really, like like it was like, horrendously bad. Like, it, it shouldn't even be legal. They might even not have been legal. But um, and now it's you, you you're you're seeing artists moving away from from labels much more. That's what they're talking about. They're moving away from label and trying to do so. What do you think NFTs can add to that relationship between artists and then the monetary value of their product? Is there an extra a layer to that and a, and a change that can be made that's positive for for people that are very talented as we've been talking about, but you know, are, are struggling in, in putting things out and making money? Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, you can come on now. Um, Okay, so it's a great question, and I think, you know, in this room we have at least two, if not more, incredible NFT artists that have worked so hard to establish themselves. But the most important thing about both of them, those two over there, Sammy and, and Violetta, with respect to those guys, um, is they're really good. They're just great artists to start with. So I think inherently you need to have that essence of, amazingness to start with, right? And, and it doesn't matter what package you wrap it up in, whether it's streaming or NFTs or whatever. I think it's really important to, to understand that NFTs are just the box. They're the new box that, that, that everything gets delivered in, right? It's a great box, it's different. There are many different angles to it, but it's still the same concept. You still gotta be delivering IP in a really cool way, you know? Casablanca is an amazing film that was filmed in, that was made in, I don't know, 1930s. You can get it, 1940s, right? You can get it in on so many different, you know, it's been through film, through celluloid, through this, that, and t'other, all the way through. 
and now you can get it on a streaming site. So, but it's still the same IP. So the IP needs to be really solid and brilliant to start with. I think how you monetize it, and absolute respect to Violetta for saying she refuses to have her music on st streaming sites. I wish all artists had that, had the balls to do that. It's a really, really courageous thing to do. But realistically, from a financial one, it, it's a no-brainer. You're not getting any paid. You know, you really aren't. Five million streams, I think, creates a thousand bucks. Well. Wow. Right? So, and then you've got to split that with your management. If you're signed to a label, they'll take 80% of it. You know, yeah. for life, yeah. forever. Yeah. So, so the monetization concept comes not, down not to... Not always forever. Not always forever. Uh, the monetization concept comes down to how can you create the same amount of money that potentially you would if you were number one, mm. but with a lot less people. Mm. And that's the basis, I think, of NFTs. And instead of it being fans, they are your partners. Mm. I have a concept called 100 True Partners, which is a, uh, an extension of 1,000 True Fans. You can go and find it out there. It's If you follow me, Tommy D, uh, on Twitter, I have a Koji link, and in there is an article called 100 True Partners. 100 True Partners is a concept where you fans is a different... I, I mentioned this earlier. Fans is a different concept, a different headspace. Partners, partners are in there. We're with you. They have skin in the game. And so you want to involve them with skin in the game. You know, there's some people on a panel before we were talking about uh, Zyla. She's talking about how she asked her community what, what questions she should ask here at NFT London. That's involving you. You involve them with, here's some demos, guys. Hey, why don't we write a song together? Who's got some ideas for lyrics? You get them involved because they're partners. They've got skin in the game. That is a new concept that is so exciting and open to so many different opportunities. I think artists have choice, and they've, you know, they have choice whether they want to release music through an NFT, through a DSP, through their own label, through a major label, through an independent label. So the choice is brilliant. Artists haven't been paid correctly since music began, which is unfortunate, and you know something that has to change. We've talked about it for the last 50 years, so I absolutely agree on that. But people should have choice. What works for one doesn't work for another. Now, there are artists at major labels that actually may have a license deal where they keep retain your music for a period, five years, and then they give it back. Sometimes when you're selling your music as an NFT, once it's sold on, do you ever get it back? You know, So you've sold it in perpetuity. Yes, you'll earn money from it, but you'll never get the rights back from it unless you buy it back. So there are many different combinations of contracts in the, in the music world that either help and support artists, but it's not one size fits all. And I, I really believe that there are certain artists that when they want mass global amplification and magnification, uh, that's when you probably need the might of one of the bigger labels. And I'd hope that if you're that big, that your deal is either a 50-50 split, not an 80-20, or it's more than that, and you're getting your rights back within three years, you know, because if you're not, then you shouldn't be paying your manager 20%. So I think, you know, everyone has the choice of where they want to go, and you can move around as well within that. Start off releasing your own music yourself, move to an independent label, then if you want to, move to a major if you want that muscle and that might, you know, to reach a bigger audience. Keep your NFTs out of the deal. That's what I say. <laughs> um, well, unfortunately, we have under one minute, um, less than one minute, and uh, I invite you to approach those amazing panelists, because I do know that there are two, three people here wanting to do extra questions. So unfortunately, the panel is not in lo in long enough. But guys, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone. And I invite you to approach uh, those amazing people next to me in the next few minutes. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Cheers.